Hello everyone, today is Thursday, December 22nd, 2016, and this is the week in charts. All right. Obviously, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. I'm humbled by your presence. So what are we can talk about? Well, obviously, let's continue to talk about this possible bull leg we're in. Well, it's not a possible one. So far, so good. And we're going to talk a lot about how to handle it from a trend follower's perspective. Obviously, your questions on trading, um, keep them, if you don't mind, keep them on the, on the subject of the slides for now. And uh, as we get towards the end of the slides, or, um, well, you know what? You can ask about anything you want. Uh, hold off on stock picks until the end, though. That's the only thing. Uh, and when you do get, when we do get to the, to the actual uh, charts, just ask about a symbol and hit return. Because if you ask about six, I won't be able to keep track of which ones I talked about and which ones I didn't. And you may not get your uh, question. But you can ask about as many as you want. I want to follow up on trend trading. I thought about a few things this morning I wanted to talk about and um, mostly reiterate. And I know I'm guilty of saying the same thing over and over. And uh, as I said last week, I'm going to keep saying the same thing until you people get it. Not you people here. Well, a couple of you, but for the most part. All right. Um, I just whiz by the disclaimer screen. You ever get bored? Check them out. There's some interesting things in there, like um, if you smoke after sex, you're doing it too fast. Or as I often sum it up, all predictions about the future, a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. I guess the big question is, how long will this current rally last? And I'm going to give you my answer to that. I have no freaking idea. <laughs> That's why they call me a trend following moron. You just follow along as a trend follower. But here's the deal. You better make some hay while the sun shines. So don't question it, as we'll say, talk about quite a bit here in just a few minutes. Just follow along is what you have to do. Now, let's talk about what trend trading is. And some of its attributes. First of all, trends are tough to predict, but you can follow them forever. Now, they're not tough to identify, okay? But they're tough to predict if they're going to continue to persist. You should be able to draw a big blue arrow on the chart to know if it's a trend. And if you're a little bit more advanced, there are some things that you should be able to recognize if the trend has begun to turn. But they are tough to predict, okay? As Yogi Berra once said, all predictions, well, what did he say? Um, predictions are tough, especially about the future. But you can follow them forever. Now, following them forever doesn't mean it's going to, it's going to be easy. Far from it. As Covell once wrote, it's like riding a bouncing Bronco. And it's the market's job to buck you off of that trend. Now, here's the deal. Even when you do catch a trend, and let's say you catch a nice one, in the end, you're going to be wrong. Okay? My uh, pin came unplugged. Let's see if it's working now. Here we go. So, as I often say, you're going to be wrong in the end. And in fact, you're going to be wrong on every trade. Or I should say, let me rephrase that. Let me rewind that. Every trade is going in badly. So, you're either going to make a little money, get stopped out, get to that initial profit target, which we're going to look at an example of that in just one second. Or, you're just going to flat out lose. Okay? Or, if you do are fortunate enough, did I just say fortunate? Be fortunate enough to catch a trend and get the initial profit target. At some point in time, you're going to be wrong with your trailing stop, and you're going to get stopped out. And you will give up a significant portion of the money. But from the entry to here can often be very nice, of substantial. And in a case like that, you can't look at what you could have made, 
but you look at what you made and you congratulate yourself for following the system. So you must be willing to let go of your ego when it comes to following a, a trend. Because, again, you're going to be wrong in the end and have to give up some open profits. If you're not willing to give up open profits, you're never going to capture a decent trend. Let me rephrase, Let me repeat that, not rephrase it, just repeat it straight out. If you're not willing to give up some open profits, you'll never capture a longer-term trend. And again, you'll be wrong in the end, so don't try to pick the top. And as I often preach, let's say you're up 25%, okay? If you take profits at 25%, you'll never make 50%. If you take profits at 50%, you'll never make 100%. And if you take profits at 100%, you'll never make 1,000% on a trade, okay? Now, keep in mind that you must never forget, in order to be successful as a trader, and I forget who said it, but it was in one of the market wizards, and I've got to find it. It's, it's in one of my columns. I'm, I was digging it out yesterday to put in the intro course. But he said the secret to trading is preservation of capital and occasional home runs. And I could not agree more. You must position yourself where you have limited losses and unlimited gains and not just the opposite. And trust me, I've been part of things that are just the opposite. There's a two-drink minimum on some of these stories, maybe a three-drink minimum. And it's been very painful and all. And I learned my lesson, trust me, the very hard way. There's a lot of systems out there that will consistently make money. But Dave, why don't we follow them? Well, because that'll work until it don't, okay? If someone emails you about an income-producing strategy, you should run, not walk away from it. Because in a case like that, what happens is you kind of chip away at it. It's a so-called anthill strategy. You make a little, make a little. Your equity curve looks like this, and then, bam, you get whacked really bad. And then it's kind of like rinse and repeat, provided you could survive this mentally and monetarily. I don't want to go off on the, this type of trading right now. It's, it's not the intention of this program. But if you go in and watch as many week of charges as you can stand and don't operate heavy machinery afterwards, you'll find um, plenty of examples where I talk about that. Now, more on trend trading. Trends go much further and last much longer than most are willing to believe. In fact, people fighting trends actually helps to propel them, which is kind of an interesting, uh, what do you call that? It's just kind of interesting. How's that? <laughs> Now, you don't want to confuse the issue with the facts. You just want to follow along. Don't think too much, okay? And after the fact, the real reasons and rationale will come along. But while the trend is developing, don't worry about the reason why it might be. For instance, over the past several weeks, I've been talking quite a bit about the so-called Trump rally and the fact that There's going to there's some of these big picture ideas and logically some things make sense. And I caution you against these type of things when you're getting into a trend to reason that, oh, well, Trump's going to be good for this or or whatever. It, the example I used last time, last few times was that, well, Obama's going to be anti-gun, so you better avoid the gun stocks. And the gun stocks had the greatest bull market out of uh, many stocks during uh, Mr. Obama, President Obama's tenure, up like eight, nine hundred percent. So you got to be really careful not to confuse the issue with facts or put some logic to it. Now, whatever is, is. Is the market going up? Is the market going down? Or the market going side? Or the market going sideways? Easy for me to say. So unless you're Bubba, what is, is, whatever the market is doing, up, down, or sideways, draw your arrows, that's what it's doing, up, down, or sideways. That's the only three states a market can exist. 
So remember that if you're counting some sort of wave or using some sort of bar counting technique or arcane type of numerology. If you want to do all that, knock yourself out. But just make sure you first decide on a market direction. I I know someone who made a lot of money with one of these wave counting things. And he was following along with my service and he was taking a lot of my service recommendations and he just absolutely printed money. This was in 2009, okay, 2008, 2009. What would the market do? It went straight down. Well, his counting method was congruent with the market. But what happened in 2009 when the market began to turn, he was still using his counting method and ignoring the trend turn. Well, that's where he ended up giving up a lot of its money, his money. I don't know what happened over the next few years, but I'd be willing to bet because every time I talked to him, he was still bearish even though the market was going up. So what it is is if you're going to use something more complex, that's fine. Just make sure you pay attention to the trend. And I'm going to throw something out at you that you need, you need to write down. Everything works better with trend. Okay? Everything works better with trend. So regardless of your methodology, if you put a little trend behind it, it's going to work much better. Now, this kind of brings us into our next point, these, these complex methodologies that a lot of people tend to be drawn to, especially the more intelligent people. The smarter you are, the harder it will be. Linda Rasky once said, if you don't know what the trend is, ask a six-year-old kid. Now, those of you who know me, you know that I often say that. Well, you probably haven't heard me say it recently. And the reason is, I've said it so much, quote, and quoting Linda, giving her credit, but I said it so much, people thought that it was my, that I'm the person that came up with it. And it's, no, it's, it's Linda Rasky. And I felt, kind of felt like if I keep saying it, people think I'm, I'm not giving her due credit or whatever. So people thought it was me. But no, it's actually Linda that said that. And furthermore, it reached a point where people started quoting me, but they forgot to mention it was me. But it was Linda anyway, so I just stopped saying it. But I actually heard, I've actually heard people on the Internet and webinars say, if you don't know what the trend is, ask a six-year-old trend. I'm like, geez, I wonder where they got that. And then Linda's probably thinking, geez, I wonder where they got that. <laughs> so Linda's pretty cool. Though. I was like, you know, you tell us, something, hey, I picked up this from you. And she's like, oh, I don't know where I got that. It's like she's real real modest when it comes to those things. So, But anyway, um, you know what I thought about as I was putting the slide together is uh, I've held a couple of people win or nearly win, I should say, some stock contests. Uh, because kids, because they just did what I told them to do, okay? Now, market conditions happen to be conducive at the time, so that certainly didn't hurt, but they just followed along, and they did what I told them to do, and they did they did very well. And, and if you go look back in, on my website and look back on YouTube, you'll find a, a couple of these presentations that I did. And that's why they did well, because they could care less. They don't get caught up in, in, in that they could they could take profits from the money and, and pay off a car or pay off a credit card or whatever or pay off the mortgage. They don't take profits soon because they their ego wants to wants to get out at the exact top. They don't pick tops. They don't pick bottoms because all they really care about is getting out of the class. Okay, and they see that it's working, so they just continue to follow along collect their A, A and leave. Smart people tend to interject logic into the equation. My favorite saying is, don't confuse the issue with facts. I actually bought that domain, and I also bought its counterpart, do not confuse the issue with facts. It used to take, take you to my website. I don't know where the DNS and all that other stuff is doing now. Um, it's kind of frustrating, but that's another point. point. But smart people tend to interject logic into the equation. They tend to confuse the issue with facts. And I love this graphic. It's like if the market's going down and their system, if they're using some sort of complex counting system or whatever, and the system says it should be going up, what are they going to do? They fight the trend. 
if the market's going down and the fundamentals are good and the economy is good and the company's good or whatever the case may be, or they like the present administration, okay, but the market's going down, what is, is. So to recap from last week, it's trend following. First of all, you're recognizing the current conditions, up, down, or sideways. And then you're not going to want to try to outsmart the market, okay? So let's say you're long and you, you're watching the overall market. And the overall market starts doing this. Well, this doesn't mean you're going to bail out on your old positions. You want to stick with them until you're proven wrong, okay? And the example that I've used quite often in the week of charts is, is CNX. And CNX went up, then it went sideways, and it went up, went sideways, made like a bow tie, went up, made another bow tie, went up, broke out, came back in. Okay, not the prettiest looking chart over here, but so what? We're long from way back here. We got a trailing stop in place. We're just to follow along for a long, long time, hopefully. And hopefully we'll be talking about CNX this time next year, okay? So it's staying with old positions until you're wrong. And again, you're going to overstay your welcome because one of these pullbacks along the way is going to be the mother of all reversals, okay? At some point in time, it's going to stop stair-stepping higher. And when it does, you're going to get stopped out. Well, again, don't get pissed off and say, oh, I lost money from here to here. No, you didn't lose money in a trade. You made money. Okay. Now, when it does appear to be rolling over, which sooner or later this market will roll over, okay? I really thought it was done last summer or summer 2015, I think, or fall 2015. I forget. I have to go back and look at the presentations and look at the charts. And the, uh, by the way, the Russell 2000 out of a weekly bow tie did drop about 18%. And I, I guess if you measure peak to trough, it, it probably was 20%. And, and the media, not that that matters to me, but the media defines a bear market at 20%. Now, again, you want to stick with your old positions when things begin to change, the tide begins to turn. But then you want to consider changing sides on new positions. And sometimes it's a beautiful thing. Sometimes it will be long, plus one meaning long, several positions, and all of a sudden we'll put a short on, okay? And then we'll get stopped out of a long, and we end up putting another short on, and then we might get stopped out of another long, okay? And then maybe this one long just keeps on keeping on because somehow it defines the overall market, but then we end up with a portfolio of mostly shorts. Go back and look at the archives from early 2016. We were shorting with both fists. If you don't have the time to go dig them out, go in and watch last week's chart show. It's up on YouTube. It's on my website, too. OK, so go in and watch last week's chart show and you're going to see that we were the portfolio, at least, was 100 percent short in early 2016. Why the market was rolling over? Why we're getting setups? OK, why? Well, I don't know why, because things were going down. Right. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it going sideways? It's going down. OK, so we short it. Now. If the market does begin to chop sideways, and your best litmus test there, by the way, or, or not even a litmus test, just obvious, look at where the close is today and look back at where the close was several weeks ago, several months ago, and sometimes several years ago, okay? And if that close is unchanged, or relatively unchanged, then maybe there isn't a trend. All right. Any questions on trend following? I got Nicholas queued up. I'm waiting for you guys to ask me about goal. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about discretion versus micromanagement. Now, discretion is basically using your brain to generally improve performance. And that means minor tweaks to the methodology while not drifting too far from the core methodology. You might give 
a position, a little bit more room on a stop when it's going to be a potential opening gap reversal situation or if it is an opening gap reversal situation. And we'll take a look at a live example here in a few minutes. And micromanagement, some, for some reason, people confuse the two. Okay, discretion is just sticking with the methodology and trying to kind of tweak it just a little bit. It's very subtle changes by using your brain. Micromanagement is abandoning nearly completely or completely the original plan in attempt to outsmart the market. Once again, your ego rears its ugly head. Here's the problem with micromanagement. It can often pay over the short term, but it never pays longer term. You get out of a trade because it's going sideways and it's so-called, you know, dead money. I can't draw skull and crossbones, but you get the idea, okay? So you get out of a trade because it's going sideways, and guess what? It implodes. You feel pretty darn smart. Congratulations. Good job, okay? You are in a position that's going straight up. You get out here, okay? Congratulations, you caught the exact top, okay? And you're in a trade that begins to roll over. Your stop is here. You get out here. Congratulations, you saved that much money, okay? Well, guess what? Sometimes that stock will go sideways and then blast higher. How many dead money reports have I showed, okay? Sometimes you exit thinking, okay, how often do you get 50%? Not often, right? Might as well take it, huh? But then the stock goes on to go up 500%, okay? You miss one of these, you have screwed yourself out of a potentially incredible year, okay? So micromanagement will often pay over the short term. The market could be a really, really bad teacher. But no one is that smart. No one knows when that trend will exactly end and where, okay? All right, let's take a look at a example of using discretion. And this was, we started talking about this one last week. This was a buy uh, back in November. And this was the symbol, this was the buy 770, stop at 620, initial profit target of 920, okay? So if you go up to that 920, it hit 918, okay? Didn't quite get there. Off by two cents. But you know what? Close enough. People, sometimes I'll show an example like this. But Dave, why didn't you set the initial profit target at 918? It's like, well, you know, if I was that, if I, if I, could, if I had that kind of foresight, if I had that crystal ball I could see ahead, you'd never see my fat ass again. Instead, I'm here struggling like the rest of us, because we don't know, okay? So take it. You're off by two cents. And also notice, it wasn't like it just got within two cents and then completely died, so it would have been tough to, to get that close to initial profit target out. It actually closed not that far away. So... Don't split hairs when it comes to taking the initial profit target, okay? If it gets this close, that's close enough. Now, the stock did go on to officially hit it over here, and then it began to retrace. Now, this actually gives us another example because we had to stop right below the low, I think 770, and... We do coming into this day here that it would likely get stopped out. Well, it didn't. And then the next day it traded a little higher. Now today it's actually it actually hit the stop, okay? So what you do is you want to pull a stop. You want to let the stock open. And then you want to have an uncle point in mind. So it's like, okay, I am nearing my stop. I made $1,000 on this first loaf. And I'm getting ready to scratch out at zero if I let the stop get hit. But let me just give it a little bit of wiggle room just in case it's an opening type of gap reversal like we had this morning. But you have to have an uncle point in mind to those of you who are 
or non uh, or not from the U.S. that are watching in. I don't know what it's called in your country, but in the United States, it's called an uncle point. It's like somebody, uh, you know, I had a I had an uncle that would give me, oh, it was actually a cousin who gave me titty twisters, you know. <laughs> it's like grab you and it's like, say uncle, say uncle, you know. Um, but it's an uncle point. I don't know why they call it an uncle point. I just, I grew up with that phrase, you know, tormented by my cousin. But that's another story. So have an uncle point in mind, and if the stock begins to reverse, then you could put your stop back in. Maybe at that uncle point, if it continues higher, then you could put the original stop back in place, okay? But again, we're not going to split hairs, okay, over that stop. The ultimate goal is to have the second half of the trade work out really nicely. And we're just trying to survive that second half. And we get stopped out, stopped out. Even if you lose a little bit of money on the second loaf, at least you made money in the trade overall. You don't want to you don't want to give up your entire trade, but you have to be willing to lose just a little bit in order to possibly stick with the position. Because by the time this stock gets all the way down here, it's overbought and due to reverse. The problem is we don't know where it's going to reverse. That's the danger with reversion to the B type of trading that people said, okay, what's well, oversold, you just buy it. Well, that, that'll work until it don't. But there is a chance that a stock could reverse at those levels. So let's zoom in on today's action. And let's see something here. I'm just curious to see where it is now. Okay, so it's right around there. So if you zoom in, so not much has changed. So we had a stop at 770. And if I get my pen back, here it is. 770. And it just went to like 769, okay? So you know that it's pretty close to the stop coming into the day, or it has been recently. So it's okay to not have that stop in place. By the way, discretion does require discipline. If you're not disciplined, follow things mechanically until you become successful, and then slowly start adding in a little bit of discretion. Now, I probably need to say this just in case. Discretion is not throwing caution to the wind and watching the stock go down to zero, hoping it reverses. Discretion is giving it a little bit of rum just in case it finds it slow in early trading, okay? So in this particular case, you can see it gap lower overnight, and it then began to trade a little lower. This is just a one-minute chart, okay? So on a one-minute, this is one, two, three, four, like within the first five minutes of trading, it found it's low. Dave, how long should I wait? Well, it all depends, okay? Wait a little while and see where this – don't worry about time so much. Forget about time. Just worry about price, okay? So if it blow, if it hits that stop and then it keeps going, then, again, you have to have – let's go back to the prior slide, which I don't know if it's going to make me go through the animations. No. You have to have that uncle point in mind, some point where you're going to get out, no questions asked, okay? So, again, it opened much lower, 778, stop was at 770. I mean, that's only $0.08 cents on a $8 stock. So that's not that big of a deal, right? On a daily chart, that's just a little bit blip. So be willing to give it a little bit of wiggle room on the open, see if it reverses. And then if it keeps dropping, you just have to close your eyes, push the button, sell the stock, and move on. And guess what? You made money. You still made money in overall trade. And I wasn't going to say it, but I can't help myself. I really can't help myself. If I get an email from one of you people bitching about making money on this trade, did did you need to send me that money? Keep enough out to get a massage. Go get a massage. Get yourself centered, okay? And just forget about that trade. Twenty something years of doing this publicly, at least since 1995. Jesus Christ, I'm old. Um, I shouldn't have said that. I used to work with a lady. She's like calling somebody you know. <laughs> uh, I've never I've never received a check. All right, let's take a look at NTB. Let's take a look at another example of discretion. This was a hot IPO pullback. We talked about this one last week, and this was our these were our parameters here. By the way, all the examples I use, nearly all, virtually all, I can think of one I used maybe in the last five years, uh, they come straight from my trading service. So get at least get on a delayed service, and there's it's subject to availability. Um, I'll kick you off after about a year. 
or so right now that's about how it's running but as it gets more popular I might have to kick you off a little sooner uh, but I'd love to have you on the real service if you uh, if you like but here's the actual stock right here in the portfolio and we talked about this one last week so there's our buy here's our initial profit target and this is what the stock has done since now notice once again, you know, blink your eyes or squint your eyes, or squint your eyes, you should say. It almost looks like it's at that profit target, but not quite, okay? Not quite. And you can see based on yesterday's close of $32.79, you didn't quite have that full $1,000 that we're looking for in that first loaf per 100K, 1%. But again, don't split hairs, okay? Be willing to take those profits a little bit early. All right, any questions on anything so far? <laughs> okay, uh, Martin asked a very good question. And I'm going to answer that with a special report. Okay, let me see if I can pull up my website. Um, by the way, while we're here, uh, if you come up to this banner ad up top or whatever you call this, just pop in, slide in. Uh, the stock selection course is on sale, $500 off, and then you're going to get the IPO course free, which is about $500, $497, I think. So check that out. There's no promo code needed. Uh, the only thing is you have to buy the course first, and then it'll take me a few hours to turn on the IPO course. It's not automatically done. It has to be manually turned on. Uh, with these courses, you get lifetime support, okay? So that doesn't mean, hey, Dave, I'm building a trading system. No, but it's like, hey, Dave, I'm a little confused on this IPO pattern. I'll walk you through it. And those people who know me, and sometimes I might make you rewatch it first, but those people who know me, I'll actually, I'll call you up or you can call me up and I'll share a screen and we'll walk you through it. So don't worry about that. That type of support is what it's 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 uh, designed for. Make sure you get it. Also, anytime you buy a course, now I'm still working on some other course. I'm still working on an intro course, and maybe I'll do a, a, a psychology course after that. But eventually, I'm going to go in and freshen these course up courses up when they need to be freshened up. Right now, I don't see any reason uh, because every nothing's really changed. Uh, in fact, the IPO course is is uh, is working so well, I've actually been a victim of my own success. I've lost at least one client in my trading service because she's doing so well in IPOs, uh, which I cautioned her that won't last forever, but so far it's lasted a while. What did I say earlier? Trends last a lot longer and go a lot more further than most are willing to believe. So do check this out, lifetime support. Um, if you go to my store, you see the shop now right here? And this is going to answer your question in a lot of detail. I'm going to answer it. I'm going to give you a short answer in just a minute. But I make you walk through the store, make you walk through the gift shop to get to the free stuff. Down here in the free reports. And the one you're going to want is, and you can download them all, by the way. But the one you want is going to be, let me find it. Why you should trade in efficient markets, okay? That's the one you want. And that's going to, going to uh, give you an article on uh, – <laughs> we'll get to that soon. That's going to get you, give you an article on why you should trade in efficient markets. Um, the thing to remember is you're not going to get – like you take a look at like that CNX, okay? I'm just punch it up for you real quick. CNX is up about 200 and something percent so far this year, okay? 277 percent or thereabouts. And it was up even more earlier. It was up, well, let's see. Fun with math, huh? Well, you get the idea. It was up a lot, okay, nearly 300%. And so far, we've caught about 100-and-something percent of that rally. The British pound is not going to double in 2017, okay? I mean, stranger things have happened, but it's probably not going to double in 2017. Gold 
is probably not going to be inefficient enough to double. Efficient markets are markets where there's a lot of players. Take Forex. Now, I do trade Forex, okay? But you got to pick your spots really carefully. I'm not going to get into how to trade Forex today. But you have to pick your spots very carefully. You can use the same exact patterns I use in stocks. In fact, I use the same exact methodology regardless of the market. But with stocks, you're more likely to be able to capture that inefficiency. And again, read the article for a long-winded discussion on efficient markets. By the way, when I meet someone and they're talking about market efficiencies, I really realize that that person gets it and understands it. So let's take Forex, for example. You might have some country doing some sort of, um, I hate to say manipulation, but some sort of actions in the Forex market. You could have a big hedger. You could have a, a multi-billion dollar company that just landed a big contract in, let's say, Japan or something, and they might sell the stuffing out of the Japanese yen to hedge their bet. Because let's say they, they, they sell $10 billion worth of stuff, they're going to get paid in yen. Well, they could short the yen, and that's going to mitigate any type of currency risk that they might have. Okay? And then you've got everybody and their brother's got a little Forex account. I mean, all these uh, scumbags on the Internet pushing Forex on everyone like it's the be-all, end-all. It's just a market, okay? It's nothing magical about it. And it's a hard market to trade, okay? I do trade currencies, but they're hard to trade. Uh, I have a love-hate relationship with them. Sometimes I love them, and, but sometimes they, I love them and they hate my account. <laughs> um, but you have to pick your spots very carefully. An inefficient market has the potential to make a very large inefficient type of move because you're kind of getting in long before it gets discovered. Like, let's take a look at that little IPO, NTB. And this is a very inefficient move, right? So, and by the way, it's, it's up towards the profit target again. So don't split hairs. Take profits. But this type of move is possible. That's what, 13% over a short period of time. A currency is not going to move that far over a short period of time, okay? Now, you could argue, well, with leverage, you could leverage up, but then that, that, that opens up another can of worms. So that's why I like IPOs so much, because they're wonderfully inefficient. You get in before the whole world discovers them, so to speak, and you're not fighting it out with everyone. Once, and there's a lot of nuances with IPOs. In fact, I'm not a big breakout trader, but if you have the IPO course or the IPO section of the stock selection course, you'll know that... Um, there are some breakout characteristics in IPO. I mean, just look at this one, for instance. Look at the breakout here. Look what happened, okay? And that's because there's not a whole bunch of people back here that are looking to get out of break even. There's no bad memories when, a stop, when an IPO breaks out. I mean, you could argue there might be some people behind the scenes that don't have prints on the, on the tape, but, but that's impossible to quantify anyway. But in real markets, I'm sorry, real markets meaning that an established stock, it's possible you could have a big wad of overhead resistance above the market, and as soon as it breaks out, it's going to get hammered back down. Also, as soon as something breaks out, everybody's screen lights up, and people begin shorting them because breakouts usually fail. But in IPOs, they're more likely to follow through, and I do have, again, some breakout patterns there. So those type of inefficient moves are a lot more possible in smaller stocks, IPOs, on things of that nature. Okay, Sam says, my lifetime or yours? Well, I guess both, huh? <laughs> I don't know, Sam, how old are you? I hope I live a long time, but, geez, who knows? <laughs> you know, I used to think I was uh, invincible. Then I fell, I was working on my barn. I fell through the loft. The floor gave out on me, and I dropped about 10 feet. A, safe, a friend of mine is a safety uh, guy, and he said, um, the statistic, he goes, I beat the statistics. It was a good chance I could have died from that uh, that fall. And uh, But, yeah, now my back's all kind of creaky and all, and I'm starting to feel like an old fart. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that lifetime is not that impressive <laughs> so, as long as I'm around. Uh, 54 going on 55. Well, we're about the same age, so hopefully we both live a long time, Sam. Matt says, lifetime support is excellent, and you have always respond quickly. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Oh, thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. Yeah, I've actually uh, 
I know I'll probably say this all the time. I've actually taken a few steps to improve my health. I'm um, doing some pretty serious cardio now, believe it or not. Fat Dave, huh? Big Fat Dave, hard to believe. Uh, before I forget, no show next week. Uh, it's going to be thin, dull trading anyway. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't continue to follow your plan. Doesn't mean you could, should, shouldn't keep uh, looking for opportunities. I'm going to do a full service next week. Uh, meaning that I'm going to spend a few hours a day looking for stocks, but I'm just not going to do a show on Thursday. So it, I think most people are off doing their holiday stuff anyway. So, um, But I'll see you the following week, first year of New Year. Uh, and again, stock selection course on sale. Get the IPO course free, unlimited lifetime support. Uh, I've, I've had everyone that's ever gotten this has been really happy with it. And, um, and again, I do the follow-up. and. It works well. Still working the beginner's course. Uh, it was so weird. I was like, um, I, I had charts from 2015 in there, and I realized, like, holy moly, now it's almost 2017, and my, my, my charts that were current at the time are now over a year old. So it's taken me a lot longer than I thought it would. But I really feel like it's going to be my masterpiece. And, and the thing about it is when you come back to the beginning is where that true enlightenment comes. I've often given the speech where, I show the the circle, the circle of life, the circle of your trading life, okay, where you go off on this holy grail hunt, okay, and down here you're counting waves or you're doing some kind of numerology or something, and then all of a sudden you start peeling those indicators off and you're back to the blank chart, okay. It's that that Elliot quote, T.S. Elliot quote. You know, we should not we should not cease from exploration, and in the end we. Uh, we, we, we find ourselves at the beginning. And that's that's really what happens. And sometimes the journey takes about five years. Sometimes it takes about 10 years. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer. But it's amazing how what you need to know is back here and not down here somewhere. And the true enlightenment comes when you start stripping off all those indicators. And I've, got, I've gotten uh, charts emailed to me before where you can't even see the price bars of so many indicators. And then as uh, Tom McClellan once said, uh, we were talking about this last week, if you draw enough lines on a chart, one of them is going to intersect the price and mean something, or at least appear to mean something, but don't get caught up in that. Uh, and again, make sure you're under delayed service. Um, I'm probably going to work on this website a little bit or have it worked on, whatever the case may be. But if you go down to getting started on the homepage, you can find the, the – uh, the free service and also on the home page now again I might change things around so I don't know if it's gonna be like this a year from now but right now on the home page if you drop down here you can go in and see what was happening about a week or so ago depends on the amount of setups down here if they're still relevant I might have to go a little bit further but right now it's 1214 or 1215 services is, is uh, on the home page but if you want to follow along daily and sometimes I have to wait a few days before updating it go to let's get started and then you'll see under there they have the uh, 10 steps to success. I think it's like number nine. Okay. Get the foresight and hindsight free service. Also, there's a free, you know, I was told by people, no, you give away too much. But uh, this is only supposed to be like a 10-minute teaser video. But it's over an hour video just on stock selection. So make sure you at least watch this. Even if you don't get the course, watch the video on stock selection. <laughs> David, I don't like to preach about nutrition, complex subject, but cardio is not the way to go. You injure yourself. As I say, cannot run your eating habits, calories. Eating is 80% of losing weight, feeling better, 10% is exercise, 10% trick, and genes. Reach out to me. Yeah, I, I know. It's like a lot, you know, it's kind of like I know a lot of things. <laughs> uh, you know, knowing and doing. So, but yeah, I've never been a fan of cardio, and, and it just so happens that we got a spin bike now. we got a Peloton, and, uh, and I'm kind of a mule on that thing, kind of, kind of crazy. Um, eventually, I'm, I, I've got weights collecting dust in the back of my office. Bill pointed out that Vail's at the 50-day. Yeah, let's take a look at that. All right, um, let's go ahead and open up for stocks, and then I'll. Um, I want to go through the overall market for a few minutes, and then I want to um, take a look at the sectors, and then we'll uh, hop into the um, to your stock picks. Okay. And any questions, you could always email me, davidavelandrew.com. I answer all my own emails. Some people are shocked at that. 
Some people are like, I can't believe I got a reply. Um, use a, by the way, use a direct email uh, because if you use the contact, I have to put contact forms on my website to help cut down. It, it doesn't completely cut down on the spam, but it helps. Uh, but once, but if you're watching this show and you have a legitimate email, you're not trying to spam, then just use my real email and type it in your um, your provider. Because what will happen is you'll end up, uh, when you go through that, uh, what do you call it, the forum, uh, a, lot, a lot of those end up in spam. Okay, and I, I might find them a week later. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the overall market, and then let's drill down to some sectors and We'll take a look at your stocks here, but start asking about your stocks. One, one per line, hit return. Yeah, Martin, to answer your question, are some markets more suited to trend following? Ideally, uh, yes, stocks, but big trends can exist and can develop in other markets. It's just less likely, and again, you got to pick your spots carefully, okay? All right, let's take a look at the overall market. First of all, let's take a look at the peas. Now, obviously, the peas are selling off a little bit today, and they have sold off a little bit yesterday. One thing that's a little bit concerning here, and I was showing my peeps this last night, and now I'll show you, is that on an hourly chart, we do have a bow tie forming on the cash market. And if you take a look at the spiders, they already bow tied down uh, back on the 19th, okay? Um, not that you want to go out and, and, and trade these things, but to be short here and have a stop at the new highs, that would be a, a possible viable trade because, and that's kind of, I'm kind of giving away my Forex trading here. Uh, that's one thing I do like to do in Forex. I'm not really fighting the trend, but I'm looking for, a short-term transition, and sometimes those short-term transitions could be something else. Now, bigger picture-wise, this might only turn into a little bit of a pullback. There's your daily chart. I'm often asked, hey, Dave, why don't we watch the hourly charts? Well, the problem with the hourly charts is there will be some noise there. The further you drill down, the more noise there will be. Uh, there was an hourly sell signal back here, okay, that didn't pan out. So you have to be kind of careful. Now, in a more efficient market like the S&P 500 and the and Forex, if you're looking to make just a trade, it's okay to maybe trade off the hourly or whatever. But in stocks in general, it can be way too noisy, okay? All right, let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Oh, by the way, the P so far, their breakouts uh, remains intact intact you can see they've broken out past this prior peak in here pull back a little bit to kiss that little range goodbye sometimes the market will do that take it off okay let's clean this chart up a little bit i'm gonna end up drawing too many lines right and now we're kind of ending in this little consolidation which is okay okay um i mean ideally i want a market to go straight up especially when i'm heavily long but in reality, the best markets are those markets go up, consolidate, go up, consolidate, go up, consolidate, rinse and repeat. And during this consolidation, it gives people time to jockey for positions, people that think they should take profits because it's over with. You know, remember, and this is a Linda Rask. I got this from Rask, and I don't know where she got it because uh, she wasn't sure either when I asked her. But a market will do what it has to do to frustrate the most. And a corollary, a corollary to that, that's hard to say. A corollary to that is a market will often do the most obvious in an unobvious manner. So if it's headed higher, what's it going to do first? Have a big shakeout move. And that's why something like a TKO works best, okay? So, yes, the market is losing steam, but let's not get too excited just yet. Keep your eye on the prize. So far, it has generally worked its way higher. higher. So far, it's just off all-time highs. So far, so good. It's not going to be a straight line higher. There will be some consolidations along the way, and at some point, it will end, okay? I'm going to use the word hope. I know I'm not supposed to, but hopefully, that'll be a long, long time from now. Let's take a look at NASDAQ. 
Oh, we did take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ consolidating two in here, selling off down towards the bottom of its range. My only concern with the NASDAQ is it really didn't clear this prior range too much. So I'd feel better, a lot better, if it if it would have rallied more before correcting. Whereas if you go back to the P's, the P's at least cleared that range decisively. Okay. So that's this is the good thing here. Whereas the NASDAQ didn't really clear it decisively. Russell 2000, a little bit better than the NASDAQ and even better than the S&P 500. You can see it cleared it nicely. Now, shorter term, we're obviously selling off fairly hard. Okay. But I'm not going to get too excited just yet. Now, if we do come below this prior little peak in here, and if you watch that stock selection video, you'll you'll see that I point that out. Uh, this is the free video you can watch on that page. Just go to the banner ad or the, the pop down, whatever you call those things, slide in ad, and watch the video on that page. But when you have a, a pullback that pulls back to the prior pullback like that, that is a little concerning, okay? So if we drop towards back towards this prior pullback, I wouldn't sell the form, I wouldn't freak out, but I would honor my stops on existing positions and then maybe be a little bit less excited about going after new positions or make sure I have a really good looking position. Now, as far as the sector action, sector action is still looking pretty darn good in here. Uh, energies have just kind of pulled back a little bit after their recent breakout, looking pretty darn good. I still like the metals and mining, okay? Gold and silver notwithstanding. But I still like the metals and mining. Deep little pullback in here. Just make sure you wait for an entry if you're looking to trade the metals. Steel looks good. Copper looks good. Aluminium for you people across the pond. Still looks pretty good today notwithstanding. And then these industrial metals and minerals or whatever it's called still look pretty good. Everything looks pretty good in, in the metals except for gold and silver these are the silver stocks and the gold stocks not looking so hot okay so avoid those areas within the metals but everything else looks pretty good now the good news is and one uh, i was asked to provide a trade of the week and my trade of the week was xme which is the metals and mining etf to gain some exposure now again an etf is going to be more efficient i would much rather be in a little cnx or some other little mining company i think sxcp is another one we're long that's mining I'd much rather be in a CNX or an SXCP or that one we're looking at today. Are we looking at one today? Well, one of them in the Landry list, at least. Then long the XME, but it's a good way to gain, gain exposure to the sector. The XME is going to be a lot more efficient because it gets watered down than, than the individual issues, such as a CNX or SXCP. So take a look at that if you're looking to get exposure, but wait for an entry. Make sure it rallies up and hits some area. Let's just say, I don't know, 33 round numbers, okay? Banks are looking pretty darn good still, okay? Nice little pullback here, a shallow pullback, kind of flaggish in nature. That's looking pretty good. Insurance still looking pretty good in here. Financials in general still looking pretty good, okay? Drugs are a bit of a mixed bag. They're kind of all over the place, so I'm not that excited about drugs. Retail, you can see, was headed lower early this year, and then it had a pretty decent rally today, notwithstanding. So I'm not going to run out and buy a bunch of retail stocks. We have one on the radar today. But make sure you at least wait for an entry if you're going to trade retail. So retail has been improving as of late. Some areas like transports looking pretty good just off of these all-time highs in here. I think it's all-time highs. Let's confirm that. Yeah, just off their all-time highs. Uh, some people believe in transports must confirm what's going on in the indices, so-called Dow theory. Not a big fan of that, but when I see a market rallying like this and pulling back, and or sector, I should say, that confirms what's going on in the overall market and what's going on in most other sectors, then I score it as a positive, okay? The point I'm trying to make here, and believe it or not, I do have one, but the point I'm trying to make is that 
I wouldn't say, well, I'm not going to buy stocks because the transports are going down and every other stock and its brother are headed higher. But if transports are headed up higher and the overall market's headed higher, then eh, it's one more piece of the puzzle, okay? Uh, some technology doing pretty good in here. That's no big shocker with the NASDAQ doing well. Semi's just off of all, well, not quite all-time highs, but close enough to all-time highs. I think they were a little bit higher in 2000 last time I checked. But so far, so good. I'd like to see them clear this prior peak decisively like, like anything, right? But so far, so good. We don't want to see them pull back below that peak, okay? Like we just talked about earlier. Again, watch that video on the stock selection page. It's a pretty, it's pretty good if I say so myself. And and that'll give you, that'll get you started. It'll at least get you moving in the right direction when it comes to picking stocks. So check that out. Okay, what else? I think that pretty much sums up uh, health services. Uh, another one of those areas not doing so hot in here lately, but most areas doing pretty darn good. Uh, materials, manufacturing. You know, if you're gonna build walls, you're gonna need some materials, and you can need some some manufacturing stocks to do that. So those areas looking okay. Uh, today, notwithstanding a lot of these areas. So, But if we pull back in M and C, if we pull back below this range, then obviously there'd be some concerns there. Okay. Howard says, SXCP close to bow tie. I don't know. Let's take a look at that. Uh, let's go ahead and open it up for individual questions. Um, yeah, but so what? Okay, so what? Remember CNX? Uh, go back a few weeks. And look at the presentations we did on that, okay? And CNX, we got long back here. It came close to a bow tie here. It bow tied here. It bow tied here or close to a bow tie here, whatever the case may be. So once you're long and in trend-following mode, you don't really care about that anymore. But I hear you. Um, now, should you short it? Well, I would say no. If you're coming off of all-time highs like right there, then, yeah, by all means, knock yourself out. But I'm less excited about shorting a stock on a transitional type of pattern when it's at mid-range like this, okay? So the real money is on the fringes, not so much in the middle of the ranges like that, okay? Phil, my friend from across the pond who likes to trade the 50-day moving average, is pointing out that our friend Vale is at the 50 so let's throw a 50 in here. Take a look at that. Phil likes his 50. And lo and behold, it is. What color am I make it? Let's make an orange so it stands out. <laughs> yep. That's kind of a cool thing. That 50-day simple moving average, I'll have to admit, Phil, sometimes it could be uh, useful. Donald wants to know about HFC. Um, sorry about that. I had to close the window down. Uh, yeah, we talked about this one last week. As you can see, it's got some overhead supply to deal with. If you're going to trade the energies, I think you could probably find something that has a little bit less overhead supply. I hear you, though, Donald. It looks it looks decent. Um, nice thrust higher, pullback, beginning to trigger into that uh, pullback. I guess you could argue that it's a big picture, a huge picture cup and handle, but I would leave it alone based on that overhead supply. I think you could find something else. Steve says, nice webinar. Dave, thanks. C-O-M-M. -M. All right. C-O-M-M. -M. Uh, yes, as far as put it in your momentum list, no, as far as being set up. But, yeah, make sure you put that in your momentum list. It's it's uh, longer term. It's all over the place. But over the last couple of months in here, it's kind of gotten its act together. So, yeah, put that on your momentum list, but it's not set up. EVBG, that's a blast from the past. EVBG. Um. I'd really like it to clear this prior high more decisively, so I think I would pass on that one. Um, if you're going to trade IPOs, keep an eye out for, like, the breakout pattern. If you have the course, you know what I'm talking about. You know, stocks like the Pola recently kind of uh, broke out with that pattern. In fact, they're still set up now. I'd rather be in a, a Pola. Now, keep in mind, it's very thin. But I'd rather be in that than the EVBG at this juncture. Now, if the EVBG can get its act together and break out more decisively, 
then yes, on a pullback, okay? Now, remember earlier I said breakouts are, are a little bit better. I mean, if you really wanted to, then all me, by all means, when it hits new highs, it wouldn't be a bad trade, okay? I just think right now in IPOs, you might be able to find something uh, a little bit more, I guess, sexier. Jerry's been waiting patiently for SND. SND, that's going to be a metals stock. Yeah, there's your breakout powder right there. See, look at that. Bam, winning. Okay. If only it was an IPO course. If you just want the IPO course, I'll knock a couple hundred dollars off of it. Just shoot me an email. Say, hey, Dave, hook me up. Okay. Um, but right now, it's not set up. So, on a pullback, absolutely, possibly, maybe. Okay, Donna wants to know, is this example of your TKO pattern Ruth on Tuesday? That's going to be Ruth Chris Steakhouse. Ruth's no longer with us. Well, her steaks are. Uh, yes, yeah. Well, okay. First of all, it, it didn't get past its prior, prior peak of the pullback yet. And it's a little wide loose. So I would say no based on that. But if you want to pick it apart, uh, technically, yeah, it's kind of TKO-ish because it sort of accelerated higher. It pulled back, and it's a TKO within the trend. I wouldn't call it a textbook TKO or a clean TKO, but obviously I wouldn't trade it uh, because of the longer-term issues. And it can be a little wide and loose, so I pass on that. So not really a good example of a TKO. Um, watch that video on my website. And take a look at the textbook type of examples I use there. And again, these are like straight from the trading service. I think there's one that ended up in that video that's not. But again, 99.9% .9 of the time, everything is straight from the trading service. I think just a couple in there from it. Um, and I think it's the one with the shark on it. Scroll down when you get to the website, and it's right there. Best pattern to get aboard existing trends. That's a TKO right there. Okay, let's get back to the charts. Wow, a lot of people coming in. Good, good. All right, Jerry also wants to know about ERA. He's been waiting patiently. So let me take care of Jerry real quick. Um, it's coming into a lot of overhead supply. So I think I'll pass based on that. I hear you, though. It might be worth putting on a momentum list, okay? This was kind of a neat. This, you asked about TKO. This is kind of TKO-ish looking here. Um, Thin, 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 though. Be darn careful with that. Maybe it's a little too thin, or it's way too thin to be trading. So be super-duper careful. You might be able to get with, uh, you might, if you're more experienced, no problem as a private trader. Uh, trading, a, trading a small share size, no problem. KMG, KMG for TKO. We'll probably have some TKOs after today. Yeah, this was kind of a TKO. Um, I like them when they, uh, I like them when this high is below this high, although I think we had one not somewhat recently where we took it. And the, other, the only other problem with this one is I like TKOs to be accelerating. In other words, I like the trend. Let me see if we can get a slide up here. I like them better when they're accelerating versus decelerating. Now, it doesn't mean that that stock can't continue to trade higher. I'm just really picky when it comes to what I like in stocks. And that has really served me well, especially over the past several years doing this really, really choppy market. So I like to see a stock head higher and then accelerate higher. Uh, if, if you have the book 10 best, that's what I call the accelerating momentum strategy. And then have some sort of knockout type of move as opposed to taking off and then losing momentum and then having a knockout kind of move. And again, I'm going to point you back to that stock selection webinar um, on my website. Just click on that banner ad and watch the video there. And we talk a lot about this acceleration versus deceleration. So in this particular case, it, it, it's, it's not a perfect example of deceleration. Also, look at the – it's real thin, too. So I'd be, I wouldn't take it because it's too thin. But just talking about it pattern-wise – it's sort of decelerated in here. It was taken off here, and now it decelerated. So I think I'd leave it alone. But if it could continue higher, then maybe you're on a knockout move along the way. But again, I would pass because it's way, way thin, crazy thin. 
AKS, I think that's going to be an, uh, a metal stock, huh? AKS. Um, not really enough pullback, okay? It, it pulled back a little bit, but not quite enough. But definitely put it on your momentum watch list. It does have a prior peak, but that's a long time ago. I think I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah, put it on your watch list, but it's not uh, set up right now. Elvis says, thanks for your help. Anytime, Elvis. Appreciate it. Cliff for Elvis. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. Okay, that would be a good example. I was trying to think of a stock that might be a little bit better looking than the one we just looked at. Yeah, I mean, it's got some bad memories back here, but that's a long time ago, and it's not like a huge uh, wad of overhead supply. Now, if it pulls back to this prior breakout, then all bets are off, but it looks okay. I think you might be able to find something a little bit better in the metals, but but I'm going to give you an okay on that one, Cliff. I'm sorry, that was Elvis. R-E-L-Y or R-L-Y. Oh, I typed in the wrong symbol. I'm sorry. Was it R-E-L-Y? Okay, I forget which one it was, Phil. Um, uh, if it was R-E-L-Y, you got a lot of overhead supply to deal with. So I would pass on that. MK says, uh, is that Michael? Hey, Michael. All the best to you and yours in 2017. I see you just sent me an email. I haven't read it yet. Michael's up in New York. STLD. Might see you guys uh, for, uh, and by the way, I will be doing Traders Expo. It's official now, or it's been official. I actually found out in Vegas. Somebody told me, yeah, it's on their website. So uh, it looks like I'm doing it. Um, so Traders Expo in February, if you guys want to uh, come see me. That'd be awesome. Uh, there's a paid gig, and then there's a free gig. So uh, love to see you at both. If you can't afford the paid gig uh, or you're not interested, <laughs> then at least come to the uh, free one. Uh, STLD is not too bad. I'd like to see a little bit more knockout move. When you have a big thrust higher like this, you want to see a bigger type of pullback or deeper pullback. So I'm going to pass on that. Donald says HOV uh, TKO example on yeah we're long HOV I think that might be the one I was thinking of uh, yeah there's your TKO right there whoever's looking for TKOs notice HOV had this nice little knockout move here let me clean the chart up so this is one we're actually long from this TKO okay so we got long back here where's the portfolio is it is it in the sir is it in the thing somewhere I can't bring up the live one because there's live uh, trades. See if I have it here. But yeah, good example on that. Yeah, let's bring this chart back up. Oh wait, where'd it go? I don't know if it's gonna work. Well, I thought this would happen quickly, but it's not, obviously. There it is. Nope. Alright, now I'm committed. That splitting hairs thing is kind of freaking me out too by the way. It's much worse when you look at the full size. There it is, finally. Yeah, see the HOV? That was a TKO, okay? And that was a TKO back on 12.18, so good eye on that, okay? You see how it works? It, even if you didn't find it, I would have found it for you, right? <laughs> of course, I can't always guarantee that, but yeah, so far, so good. That's what a TKO should look like you want it to be significant enough. It took out one, two, three bars of trading, and it was fairly wide bar. I'd actually prefer, would have preferred if it was a little bit wider, but it looks like we were at a rip-roaring trend here, and that was the only chance to get aboard. Mark says, have a great Xmas and New Year. Cheers, Dave. New Year's Day. Oh, yeah, cool, thanks. I was somewhere in the head. They wrote on a sign, Xmas Ale, because it was too short, and Long story endless. What about wise friend? She started complaining because they like put Xmas, meaning like, oh, let's get rid of Christmas. Like, no, I, I just think they didn't have enough rum, and it was quite embarrassing. So, I since have avoided having cocktails with her. <laughs> anyway, uh, Donald wants to know about AMD. You got it, Donald. Uh, this is going to be a semiconductor, big thick stock, okay? That's going to be a more efficient stock, but look, it's made a very inefficient move. So if you have a setup, even if it's an inefficient stock, and, and if you look at the HV, it's up around 64. 
So, but yeah, on a pullback, absolutely. That looks uh, pretty interesting. Andre wants to know about IPI. Yeah, that's one I've been watching. That's a crazy one. Mr. Phil was long, I think, already. Um, look at the HV, 124, but I know you're a little bit more aggressive type of trader. Uh, absolutely. That's a Phoenix type of stock. Super duper, 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 duper volatile, okay? You're crazy if you trade a stock like this. Do I like it? Yes. Is it crazy? Yes. Okay. Make sure you wait for an entry on that one, though. But, yeah, absolutely. Does OCLR in a weekly viewpoint look like a TKO late October? OCLR on a weekly? That'll be fun to look at. OCLR weekly. Uh, October? I don't see it. I mean, you have a little bit of a... Uh, you have a little bit of a pullback here, but not much on a weekly. Didn't the S&P uh, do like a TKO on a weekly years ago? Let's take a look at that real quick. We got time. I think we have time. Let's take a look at weekly chart. See if I can find it. Yeah, right here. Well, that's kind of a it's kind of a knockout type of move, right? Pullback slash knockout. On a weekly chart, that's just more of a pullback, I guess. But on a weekly, yeah, you know, you could argue that's kind of a TKO type of move. If you combine a couple of the bars. And, you know, don't get too caught up in the semantics of it. If it's a, um, whether it's a pullback or TKO, if the pattern looks good, then it's good. PIR is going to be Pier 1. That one's been on a tear as of late. Um when a stock has a huge gap like this relative to the volatility of the stock, usually I, I won't trade it just because it's a little bit too extreme. Um, this one tends to chop around a lot, big gap down, work its way up, big gap down. Looks like it just kind of is uh, held hostage by earnings, okay? And it's a fairly thick stock. Uh, I think I would pass. I think in retail you could find something better. I forget who asked that. If you're on the service, take the one I have on the service today. BCEI, does it have too much overhead, too volatile? BCEI, sometimes you guys answer your own questions. So let's see if that's the case. Uh, a little bit of, uh, yeah, it's not horribly bad in the overhead. Uh, the overhead that I would worry about in this one is at five bucks a share. And if I got in at 250 and it went to five bucks, uh, I think I'd be okay with that. So, yeah, maybe in a little bit more pullback, but, yeah, super duper, super duper volatile, very aggressive trade. Not quite as aggressive as IPI, but aggressive nonetheless. I mean, you, you would almost have to use a one-point stop in this thing, you know. KMG, TKO, KMG. Uh, yeah, we talked about that one. NAC for Andre, that's one I've been watching. That's uh, like a Chinese mining company. Or it sounds Chinese. Northern Dynasty. Sounds like they're from China. All right, HV, a little too crazy. 135, a little too crazy. Uh, I think it would pass. Just too crazy. It would have to have a pullback. The pullback would be pullback below this. It's too crazy. I see what you're looking at, though. Uh, but just way too crazy. Ren. That's going to be all feel, right? Um... Well, it's getting ready to hit a mountain of overhead supply. Yes, it's a few years back, but look how much it is. Uh, look how much is there, I should say. So I'd pass on that one. NMM. NMM. That's easy to say. All right, let's see. NMM. Uh, I'm going to have to go Nicholas Fine on that one. All right, y'all ready? Here he comes. No! <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it just pulled back into its prior breakout. This is what I call a bottle rocket, and that's something I think I talked about in an intro video. So if you get a chance to watch that, at least watch that off my website. Um, a bottle rocket is when a stock shoots up, goes up a few hundred percent, and that's likely not sustainable. In this particular case, as you can see, it come, came right back down. So I'd avoid that. STLD, that's got metals and mining written all over it. 
Uh, yeah, we talked about that one. It needs a little bit deeper pullback. But, yeah, it looks kind of interesting. Absolutely. NAC is Canadian company with Alaskan mine. Okay, so NAC is not even uh, from China. Yeah, it's funny. It's, it's hard to say China right anymore after the uh, election. Huh? Um, well, this is already – this is, didn't really make a big enough move for me. 43 to 45, yeah, you got kind of got to watch your scaling. Uh, as I said in the IPO course, when you're looking at um, – a, a, hey, somebody just bought one. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I don't have the name yet, so whoever it is, thank you. I'll get you the uh, IPO course as soon as we're, as soon as we're done. Um, somebody just bought the stock selection course, so thank you. Uh, I like to see a little bit more range, okay? And if you're going to play the breakout pattern, I like the breakout at least at this particular point in time. Now, I might bend the rules a little bit next year, like I said, in the course uh, subject to change, but $20 seems to be the cutoff point over the last few years of where a good breakout pattern occurs in IPOs. In this particular case, you're way up at 40-something. It's a 43 here to 46. That's not a very big move for an IPO. Uh, you know, take a look at that POLA. There's a good example. I mean, you know, from 750 to 10, that's uh, 30, 40 percent. You know, what is that? It's, it's huge. Well, it's, it's not even fully reflected because you're not getting the low of the move. You know, that type of move is something that's interesting to me, whereas that other one is only a couple of points. So, and look at, look at, look at their business, asset management. What's that other stock doing? Okay. Not that I wouldn't, well, Pola, okay. It's a uh, manufacturing and that's the big deal right now. You're going to build a wall. You're going to have to have some manufacturing, right? Um, whereas the other one was asset management. It's kind of hard to get excited about that. Okay. ATH. What's the story, fat or glory, is what you have to ask yourself. Okay, A-R-E-S for Gary also. Is that, did you type in the wrong symbol? You want to short that one, Gary? What do you want to do with that? Don't make me whip out Nicholas. And that's not code. No. Uh, debt, debt. Dust off your debt, debt, okay? I've yet to go a webinar without talking about debt, debt. Where's the stock today? Where was the stock a month ago, two months ago, three months ago, four months ago, five months ago? Yeah, yeah, Gary, you know better than that. Come on, buddy. I won't beat you up too bad. Yeah, Artec, who said that? Uh, look at that nice persistent move. Uh, anybody remember Tiny Elvis? Look at that move. It's huge. Uh, this is where you want to watch for a TKO type of move, okay? A little bit on the thin side, so be careful, but not a bad-looking stock. Very persistent, accelerating higher. Absolutely. Put that on your watch list. It's not ready yet, though, okay? Wait for the knockout move. PHMD. Arsene, you're up next. Arsene. TGB. Uh, TGB I like. I don't know if that's in Landry list today or not, but I like it a lot. Yeah, I mean, you know, crazy volatility. Uh, I actually have an order in on this one, full disclosure, just so don't, just so the SEC doesn't come after me. But yeah, I like it, but it's it's very risky. This this is what I have in in account where I do some of the S and G type of trades, fun and risky stuff, you know. But absolutely, uh, nice thrust high, a little bit of a pullback, but it's still kind of a penny stock. So just be darn careful with that. But yeah, and then here's the deal: if it gets to two bucks a share where it hits resistance, if I'm getting down here at one buck or less, then I'm okay. But this is not this is not something you would normally see me recommended in here. I think it might be in the uh, Landry list for today. Hi, Dave. We are joining back up after your call with Rod. How about Pi? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. That's that, Gary. We, we have, it's like funny, we have Gary's. Uh, we only have we only have one Andre, but we have a bunch of Donalds, and we only have one Elvis and one Arsene in here. But uh, we have a lot of Garys for some reason, a lot of Donalds and a few Dons uh, that join us each week. The women are easy. We only have one Jill. <laughs> we have one Jill, occasionally a Heather, and uh, who else is, is in here? Susan. We have one Susan. But, yeah, we have uh, lots of Garys and lots of Don. so good to know who I'm talking with. Yeah, I would watch this one for the next pullback on this one. 
Uh, this is one we talked about last week. It did a. Um, this was one that was long. We were long in the service for quite a while, and then it did what, what a deep retracement in here. I'm not a huge fan of retracements, but there definitely is something in IPOs with retracements. Uh, so, amen. The one and only Susan. There you are. I, I didn't know you're being quiet today. <laughs> the partridge in a pear tree. Yeah, Gary. Thanks for coming back, Gary. Uh, is back on is back in the service again, back in the saddle. Well, I gotta get you set up. So um, I'll get you set up. Uh, Eric says, and only one Eric. Uh, hey Dave, uh, regarding the overhead supply, when is it pretty old? Uh, just shown in Ren, and are there really many people still holding 2.5 years? A drop from 40 to 50 for two. Or are there any people still around? Let's get back to Ren and take a look at that. Well, that's something that I actually spent a long, 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 long time talking about. There's not a quick answer on that, okay? The answer is it depends. Now, are people still holding it all the way from two? Yeah, that's an interesting argument. Um, but you'd be surprised at what people would do, okay? But the good news is two years that these low levels, um, as I often talk about, you'll have tax loss selling or whatever the tax things. You'll have some divorces in there, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, depending on who you are. <laughs> Uh, I guess, fortunately, if you're a divorce lawyer, and you'll have a multitude of other things that'll happen that'll probably clear stock out. So I hear you on that, um, but unless this was a mother of all setups, I would. I think you could find something else. But that's a good point. I never really thought about it too much. Um, I just kind of look at the chart and try to be as much of a purist as possible. Heather's thinking about a short. Well, look at you. GS is a short. Well, let's take a look at that. GS. That's going to be Goldman Sachs. Well, a little early for a short there, Heather. Where's the trend headed? Looks like the trend's headed higher, so we're going to have to, uh, we're going to, have to find Nicholas. Let's see if we can get him over here. No! <laughs> you guys got to watch that. So you know what I'm talking about. Uh, <clears throat> you might be right, but early, okay? Wait for it. Wait for like a bow tie or a first thrust before thinking about shorting it. And right now, there's no real reason to short anything. Uh, I've been having a few shorts pop up. And uh, maybe just for S&Gs, I might fire up one off at some point. But for the most part, I haven't been doing any shorting. And, and well, not for the most part. I haven't shorted anything in a long, long time. Uh, not since at least earlier this year. Okay. SAIC, that's going to be a trucking company, I think. No. Let's see. SAIC. No, that's something else. I'm thinking of, uh, what am I thinking of? Saya? Um, this is a nice trend here. Maybe on a pullback, but the problem is if it pulls back, it's going to be, yeah, it's already pulled back this prior little breakout in here. So this would actually have to go on to make new highs and then pull back. There's a lot of stocks out there, so if you dig enough, you should be able to find something. CCJ, getting pretty heavy volume today. Not a big fan of paying attention to volume, but I hear you. 180% uh, of average. Yeah, but you don't know what that is. Uh, CCJ, too much overhead supply. Okay. So I'll avoid that one. TGB, we talked about. WTI, that's going to be an oil field stock. If I could type it in right. W, WTI. Come on. You could do it. A little self-talk there. Yeah, that looks okay. I'd like to see a little bit more knockout, though, but I hear you. Uh, certainly not bad. A little bit on the thin side. I mean, a little bit on the uh, low price side. You do have some overhead to deal with here, but by the time it triggered, it'd be mostly cleared. But then at around 5, you'd have some more. Uh, I guess it's far enough away to where if you made, what's that, 50% on a trade, you'd be okay. CCAJ, Trump talking about upping nu nuclear. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, don't confuse the issue with facts. Don't run out and buy nuclear stocks because of um, some sort of Trump thing. Those big picture plays could be really tough. CECE, -C -E, I think that's going to be an education stock. Nope, environmental. Boy, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing so well with my uh, stock. Yeah, it's lost momentum. Notice how it took off and then it's kind of died out in here. 
So I would pass based on that. Also, really thin. No, fairly thin. Not super duper thin, but fairly thin. Hey, Karen, how you doing? Is this New York, Karen? You can bring me a beer for our Traders Expo. Any thoughts on NVDA? Parabolic move seems unstable. Well, and and that's one thing that I that I that I that I learned of. If you watch that TKO video that's on my website that I referenced earlier, um, I talked about that shorts like to go after stocks at high levels. Shorts tend to be egotistical, and, and I spoke at the Traders for a Cause conference, and a lot of those guys uh, shorted the parabolics, and I didn't realize that that's something that it was. It was interesting to actually meet people that do. I mean, I knew people did it. I didn't realize how prevalent it was. So, uh, Heather, I wouldn't rush out and short it because we're trend followers, okay? And then, you know, I'm going to have to give you a Nicholas on that. No, okay? Um, because the trend obviously is headed higher. Now, you bring up an interesting point, okay? You say, how long is it sustainable? And the question is, I don't know. And that's where, as a trend follower, you just have to be willing to follow along and like I said earlier, trends go a lot further and last a lot longer than most people are willing to admit. Now, if you were aggressive day trader sort, don't short it just because it's high. You know, maybe look for something like we talked earlier. And again, I would not do this personally, but if you did feel like you had to short it, and, you know, just remember you're fighting a trend. Maybe wait for an hourly bow tie to occur after hitting all-time highs. But yeah, I'd be careful. Oh, geez, Karen, don't go through any trouble. <laughs> uh, I'll just go to the bar and get a beer. Yeah, you don't have to. I, I thought you, um, I didn't realize you didn't drink beer. When you mentioned getting me, bringing me a beer, I thought you uh, were a connoisseur. Hey, Don's here, and he wants to know about, guess what? F. Well, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Yeah, no. All right, let's bring out Nicholas again. We had not dusted off Nicholas in a while. No. I need to Google him on, uh, I don't know how to spell fine, but it's Nicholas Fine. Uh, too much overhead resistance. It's electrocardiogram. That's an efficient stock. Just chops around. Put your worst clients in it. <laughs> PHMD. No, this is too much of a bottle rocket. I mean, it went from 150 up to wherever it went to, and that's not even the full thing. 300%, and it's probably four or 500% to high. Uh, notice how it shot up and came right back in. Way too crazy. Who asked about that? Oh, man, you like them crazy stocks, don't you? That's Andre. IRDM. I have so many people to meet with in New York. It's going to be hard to fit everybody in, but I'm going to work on it. I'll see what I can do. Um, Andre's from New York. That's why I said that. We're going to just be – and Karen's up in New York, and I think uh, – Michael's in here. He's from New York. A lot of New Yorkers in here. Um, I don't like the prior peak in here that much. I know it's back in 2015, but I think you might be able to find something. I mean, I hear you. A nice little breakout, a nice little pullback. It looks okay, but I think you can find something better. WTI is going to be all field. WTI. Uh, we talked about that one. Yeah, we talked about that one. It needs a little bit deeper pullback. I think it's what we said last time. John was talking about edit. Edit was on my list. Uh, you notice that was in the uh, in the slides. I know somebody in here that's long. Um, edit's looking okay. Um, it's ha but not set up yet. And believe me, I'm watching this one. Uh, we were watching this one a while back. Uh, it would actually have to break out to new highs, break out to new multi-month highs, and then it maybe would look to uh, to buy it on a pullback. Okay. Brett says hope. What are you hoping, Brett? Oh, you mean the stock hope? Uh, that's not too bad. I was a little worried about the deceleration, but it looks pretty good. It's making a decent leg in here. Let's back the chart out. It's a, it's a little extended longer term. I hear you. Uh, I would like to see a really serious knockout type of move, maybe down to like 20 or something, or a pullback to 20. AMZN. NVIDIA's virtual reality. Well, they're trying to make that a big deal. Amazon at the 50. Yeah, but there's nothing to do there for me, Phil. I mean, I hear you. 
Um, you know, unless you're watching it, it's like a bellwether or something. I hear you. Oh, you're saying it's stalling at the 50. Yeah, I mean, you know, back here you had reversal gap strategy. It sold off. and then, But you're right. It is kind of holding that 50. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I might have to admit that I like the 50 at some point. Virtual reality. Yeah, don't confuse the issue with facts, though, because, you know, maybe somebody else will come along in virtual reality. Gary wants to know about FHB. FHB, Donald, the, the other Donald, you're next. FHB, if I can get it to come up. Yeah, we only have time for a couple more. Yeah, that looks good. Um, this came up in my scans last night, and I have it on, um, uh, or it's been coming up recently. It had a decent little pullback in here for the IPO. Uh, I think we took NTB on that same day, uh, if memory serves, or somewhere around there. But, yeah, next pullback, uh, in this particular case, I'd prefer if it would clear this prior high more decisively. FCU, FCAU, FCAU, maybe a better example. Yeah, you know, instead of Ford, but it does have a lot of trading back here. If you if you have to buy an automotive stock, then uh, buy Fiat, okay? You know what Fiat stands for? Fix it again, Tony. <laughs> All right, a couple more, FNMA. This is going to be from Don, so... Wait for Nicholas. F in minute. Uh, wrong symbol. F N M A. I don't have that signal. You you uh, might have a little dyslexic on us. Ford fix repair daily. Ah, Ford's okay. Fiat is is fix it again, Tony. <laughs> and tap. Uh, two sideways. Okay, what's your net net on that? Okay. TGB we talked about. Did we talk about TGB? TG, TCS. Uh, I'm, I can't comment on that one. It's on the Landry list today. Donald, you're not in the service, are you? If you are, uh, stay off the list. Or you could, you could that sounded rude. <laughs> Just ask me offline, okay? But, yes, obviously I like that one. If it's in the list, I like it, okay? And we just keep it off the, we just won't talk about it publicly. And if you're not in the service and you found it, then thanks. Uh, then not, not thanks. I'm, I'm impressed. You have a good eye. But, yeah, good eye on that one, absolutely. All right, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. Uh, everyone have a fantastic uh, – well, shoot, it's, uh, we won't talk until New Year. So uh, happy New Year uh, to those who celebrate. Uh, Merry Christmas. And uh, I enjoy these shows, obviously, immensely. It's a highlight of my week. So. Uh, thank you guys for showing up, and girls. We're getting more and more ladies in here, by the way, and that, that's exciting because I think you ladies can make better traders than us guys, and, and I've actually written extensively about that. Uh, anyway, Merry Christmas to those who celebrate. Happy New Year. I'll see all you guys and girls next year. Any questions between now and then, feel free to shoot me an email. <laughs> Susan says, how do you know my lady? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, uh, we'll see you. Uh, see you next year. Thank you so much.